I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host Bishop Earl and I appreciate you watching this evening and hopefully you'll learn something and maybe your heart will be touched and softened. I'm really happy tonight to welcome Angie Alderman. Hi. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it and as we usually do we like to get a little history and a little background mm -hmm. so tell us about your time as a growing up here in Utah was it? Yeah. Okay. Tell I us. was uh, I born and raised here, um, grew up in West Jordan, and um, baptized, served, baptized in, in the church, in, right? at eight years old, yeah, did, oh. pretty much did the whole <laughs> traditional thing. <laughs> How about your parents, were they uh, members? They were, They yeah. were sealed in the temple, is that they were, Yes, they weren't uh, originally married in the temple, but yeah. uh, did, uh, did eventually get uh, sealed in and the temple. And did you go in there to be? So no, they were, they were, they were, I was born under the covenant, oh, so, okay. yeah. All right. Um, so just active and busy as a young primary person? Person, I did yeah. primary, did all my articles of faith memorization, yeah. did, did young women's and it's graduated. It's kind of expected of us, yes, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the system. Yes. Uh, so, did. seminary, did you take seminary? I or? did, graduated. Yeah. Yeah. You feel I'm, like you had a, t oh, go ahead. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> did you feel like you had a testimony of Joseph Smith and the church? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, I was, um, as a freshman, I uh, I believe President Benson was the prophet, and uh, he was, uh, did the big push of reading the Book of Mormon. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I read I read the Book of Mormon and gained a testimony, and I knew it was true. I knew, pr I, knew Jesus, I knew Joseph Smith was a prophet. Did you ever think at that point that you'd ever even question anything you just that was just your life wasn't it it was my life and you know I remember there was a point um, when the RLDS church um, had um, stopped they had given up and renounced the Book of Mormon and I remember thinking I don't know if you remember that it was a long time ago but I, I remember the Book of Abraham but did they do the Book of I Mormon believe too? so I don't yeah. know I just remember that and I just remember what would happen if the prophet had would had come out and said, "We renounce the Book of Mormon," you know, and I remember thinking, "My life would end." <laughs> yeah, my life as I know it, <laughs> it would, would end, be yeah. over. Yeah, and I, no. I didn't know it, you know, yeah. and that was as a freshman or sophomore. So you yeah. knew then that you really were, I was you defend would I defend was the faith and absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you certainly felt like President Benson and the others were. F all prophets, oh, seers, yes. and revelators. And yes, and I followed them. I don't. You don't question that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, what happens after high school? Um, I went to uh, I went to New York as a nanny, and I was active oh. all the way through that. Yeah. A lot of young LDS girls have done that, haven't they? They did, especially at that age. It was uh, 87, 88. Yeah. Yeah. And was that a good experience? It was or a good experience. Were you active back there? I was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that was just for a year or so? I, I did that for two years, wow. yeah. And okay. kind of got the New York <laughs> kind of buzz, you know? And yeah. Yeah. And then I came home and had a really hard time adjusting back to Utah, Utah culture. Why did, wh what was the problem? 
It was slow. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that, and I, um, I think I got a taste of what was outside of Utah. Got a different perspective. Different maybe, perspective yeah. of, you know, how people lived and because I hadn't lived outside of Utah. You mean really. those people out there are good people? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's shocking, isn't <laughs> I it? I know, you right? realize yeah. that there people outside the church are good. Yeah, and yeah. There, there's differences. And, yeah. and I really struggled and, and couldn't, couldn't really find my way back into um, LDS culture. Yeah. I, do you think young girls leaving the young women's program transitioning say to Relief Society have a harder, harder time? Yeah, especially if you don't look or fit in a certain way and if you don't get married at a certain age and you don't yeah. start having children at a certain age, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that the church has a really big problem finding places for yeah. young single women who don't fit that mold. Right. So after coming back from New York, what happens? Um, I found myself getting into the wrong crowd. Okay. <laughs> and Not I said. <laughs> yeah. And I um, didn't want to do it anymore, and I went inactive. Oh wow. Yeah. What'd your parents think of that? Um, well, my mom had died a few years before that, and oh. I pretty much didn't really have a relationship with my dad, oh. so it was so like... So you were, didn't feel any pressure? Pressure, to, okay. yeah, so there wasn't... And then, uh, um, how long does this last? Um, it was about three years. In that time, I thought I was in love with a guy. <laughs> you know how you do that. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. And I moved to Oklahoma, oh. um, and kind of, that was part of my... Um, inactivity and um, was there being inactive yeah. and uh, doing my thing out there. Um, life wasn't working out yeah. and you go back to what you know. Okay. So um, went back to the church. Went back you? to the church oh, okay. and uh, you know confessed my sins to my bishop. Oh, okay. And, and you know that was a, that was a and okay, it was a good experience, I guess. At that point, I had a I had a good bishop who um, I felt different because the church outside of Utah is very is different. Yeah, um, people are different. I think the converts are <laughs> different. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it interesting, though, that you feel not compelled? I mean, that's the organization of the church, but that you need to go to a man yeah. and repent of exactly. your sins and forgive. But I didn't know anything different. Well, sure, that yeah. we don't. So that's yeah. what I did. And yeah. try to get things right. So yeah. did you eventually come back then to Salt Lake? Um, I did after I went on my mission. I, I Oh, you went from your mission? Yeah, I went from my mission for t from Oklahoma. From Oklahoma? Yeah. Oh, and where did you go on your mission? To Pocatello, Idaho. Oh. Kind of ironic. Yes, yeah. almost close to home. Yeah. How, how was that? Um, I had a real, I struggled. I, I, uh, I struggled in the fact that it was hard and my mission president expected so much of me and uh, it was just, constant work, 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 and... Uh, just numbers, you mean, that <laughs> kind of thing? Doors just knocking, or...? It, it was so much more than that, other than he expected a lot out of me. If there was a troubled sister missionary that needed help, I was the go-to sister. Um. And, um, you know, and I had, there was, I was in so many threesomes in companionships because but you know odd numbers of yeah and if there was a, if there was a missionary that needed that was on her way out the door I was the one who was going to fix her oh. you know and he was he was a worker bee <laughs> you know and so well, he must have had a lot of trust in you though well yeah <laughs> but if I if I if I faltered once yeah. you know and um, yeah I was pulled into the mission president's office and had a chit chat. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel about the church then, um, during your mission then, was that? You know, it, it was the start, I think, of my total frustration, but uh, there again, I didn't know any different. It was like, yeah. I follow the prophet, I don't question the priesthood, he is my mission president, what am I supposed to do? Sure. 
So you went through the temple, I guess, before uh, Before your mission. my mission, yeah. What temple did you go through? Uh, the Dallas Temple was okay. the first one, yeah. How was that experience? You know, I actually really loved going to the temple. That was my, f that was, I wanted to go to the temple and I didn't want to go on a mission. Um, I went on a mission to impress my friends or please my friends that wanted, that, well, you're 23, that's what you should do. You're a single sister. Oh. That's what I did. I, w I just wanted to go to the temple. Yeah. I love the temple. I loved the temple in the fact that I loved the creation once I got there and uh, you know and I loved the creation. The rest of it kind of went uh, the, the rest of it was a little strange. A little strange, yeah. but <laughs> you know, yeah, we've but had a few that have experienced that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say but you know, at the time I was drawn to the temple. So I went and that's what I did. I think it was part of God calling me out you know, and, and trying to understand, but, you know, I didn't understand at the time, yeah. you know. You, you didn't, did it raise any questions, though, specifically in your N mind? Not at the time. I think the more I went, the more... You started seeing. The scene, yeah. yeah. Well, we I went through it for so many years and didn't um, ever really connect the idea that I was consecrating everything to the church. Right. Did you ever think of that when you went through? I, I didn't think of, it wasn't until later that I realized I was consecrating everything to the church and not to God or. I think the part, I, I couldn't, I was fine with the whole creation <laughs> part. Yeah. And then as soon as they turned the movie off, <laughs> the rest of it didn't make sense. Okay. But I was just like, again, I just followed blindly, you know, well, yeah. this is re direct revelation from the prophet yeah. to, you know, and so I okay. just didn't question it, yeah. you know, and. Okay. So what happens after temple um, and mission? Mission. And, yeah. Well, um, I end up coming back to Utah and um, I end up. I get married. I'm um, I was about 25 when I came home. I get married when I'm 29. I do everything that I'm supposed to do. Is this a good Mormon boy that you married or Well, you know. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he is and but it, we were very unequally yoked. But oh. I was at the time I you know, I wanted to get married, so you yeah. know, and I'm 29 and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. So I get married. We didn't get married in the temple originally, which, pr you know, and then we were married about four years and I did all the work to get us to the temple. Get yourself worthy again to go to the temple. Yeah, so we, so yeah. we go to the temple and amazingly enough, that's when the marriage really broke down. Oh. Yeah, I know. That's strange, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So, and I just, um, it was, I just, my life was like, I had done everything. And, and I was just, it's like, okay, Heavenly Father, I have done everything that I have been, supposedly you've asked me to do. Yeah. And my life is crap right now. And I just remember, um, I was at the height of depression. Oh. My marriage was broken. Um, I had I had put on like a hundred pounds in depression in this marriage and my husband was just, it was terrible. Just and no joy at all. It, there was no joy. Yeah. And I remember saying, Heavenly Father, I just want to know you outside of the LDS church. And for me that meant... That was big, wasn't it? It was big. Yeah. And for me that meant I want to be able to sin and know you. And, and it, I know that that sounds really crazy, but you know, for me it was like, break the word of wisdom and be okay. Is that the Mormon mentality, do you think? I think of, it was, because like, it's you know. either or? or? Yeah, because it's like, you know what, if I want to have a cup of coffee or, you know, at the time I was smoking, you know, and I'm a smoker, you know, but, you know, it's it's like, I, I, I can smoke and God still loves me. You felt that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. You know, and I didn't want to be, I was tired of being bound by all these rules and and I was just, my whole life being, just being bound by all these rules and I was just tired of it. And I was just like, I'm done. There was a lot of guilt associated with that totally, too, Totally, right? totally guilt. And yeah. I was done. So I didn't know 
where I was going, I just knew that I was going to have a relationship with God outside of the LDS church, and I was going to have a cigarette. <laughs> That's where I went. Okay. You know what I mean? Whether yeah. it was healthy for me or not, that's where I was at. So did you find Jesus and God during this transition period? It took me about 10 years and it, wow. led, me, it led me down a road of total self-destruction. But um, Because you felt like you were defeated and, and not um, doing what you're supposed to? No, I gave up. I just totally gave up everything LDS. I walked away everything and I pretty much rebelled against everything LDS. However, I defended the doctrine. You did. I did. Crazy enough as it is, I defended the doctrine, but I would not live it. So you still believed in the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith yeah. and, and all the yeah. the teachings of the church. So yeah. Well, that must have been really a like you say a very difficult 10-year period. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just didn't, you know, it's like I just gave up on the guilt. I'm going to rebel, and I did. Oh, boy. Yeah, and I rebelled, <laughs> and <laughs> I got to a place that uh, led me to rehab. Oh, boy. Um, but, you know, my Heavenly Father pulled me out of a really bad situation, and he said, you know what, daughter, I'm not having it. And he saved me before I knew it. And he led me to um, a very, a very dear friend, and she started taking me to church. And uh, I said, you know, um, I'm sorry, LDS church? No, to a Christian church. <laughs> to okay. a Christian church, Intermountain Baptist, actually. Okay. Because um, I told her, I said, you know, I need to go somewhere different because I need to be away from. Uh, I need to not be involved with the people that I was involved with. I'd just come out of rehab. Yeah. And uh, I don't, I'd, I need to stay away from those friends. Um, clean yeah. and sober, year and a half, by the way. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, so she started taking me, so I started hanging out at her house and going to Intermountain Baptist. And, uh, and uh, one day I was going to church, and this was before I was saved, but, um, uh, God said, I'm sitting in church and my favorite song is How Great Thou Art. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it uh, happens to be the first song that the, you know, that's being sung. And uh, I had been attending church there for a couple weeks and, uh, you know, going in and everybody's, you know, Levi's, whatever, you know, yeah. tank casual, tops, casual, right, you know. Right. And, uh, and uh, he <laughs> I heard his voice and he said, you, you asked for a you asked for a relationship with me outside of the LDS church. And here you go. And here you go. Oh, boy. And uh, it wasn't too much longer after that that I was uh, reading a book um, by Marv Cowan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember which book it was. I don't know. I, it, was, it was a small pamphlet, but um, it just, uh, I think it was called What Mormons Should Ask, I, I think. But, um, I was reading it one day, and along with other series of events that happened, and uh, just the more the the shackles of the foundation of Mormonism just fell, and Christ just lifted up, and and I thought about that one day when I said, "What if the Book of Mormon was taken away from me?" And I thought my life would crumble, and I realized that my life wasn't going to crumble and that wow yeah and the guilt probably the guilt is i stand in grace yeah my yoke is easy my yoke is easy yeah. my burden is light and do we have troubles as christian absolutely yeah. you know we go through we go through struggles we have you know but but god is our father yeah and he does everything for our good now for the skeptical lds out there do they feel like you've just gone into something that allows you to sin? Oh, yeah, they actually have some friends at work that, um, for those who, for those who knew me before, think that I'm just on a little journey and that I'll come back. Okay. Uh, those who didn't know me before, me, before and know that I served a mission, uh, believe that um, I honestly didn't have a testimony in the first place. Sure. 
So your fault. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, it's like I understand that they don't, they they just don't have the spirit indwelling in them, so they're not yeah. going to understand. So we're just going to have a spinning conversation anyway. So here you are, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of mm -hmm. Latter Day Saints. Tell us now what Jesus really means to you, and, and what the difference is, mm. if you can put that into words. Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. He led me to the cross. I wear it proudly. Yeah. He saved me. And sometimes I can't put that into words. Yeah. And I don't have to. Oh. But um, I can say now to people, to Mormons who come up to me and ask, you know, they'll say, read the Book of Mormon. And I say, read the Book of Romans. Yeah. That's where the <laughs> Gospel of Jesus Christ is. And it's plainly explained. Don't read it with any Joseph Smith translation or Book of Mormon cross-references. Read it in whatever version you want to read it in. Yeah. But read the Book of Romans. See. It's simple. It's plain. It's there. Yeah. The real true gospel. The real true gospel. The good news. The good news. Yeah. That grace is the free gift. It's not by works. Yeah. So what else did you notice in this Christian church the first few times you went? The that people were happy and there's, you know, it's that it's not about religion. No, it's about Christ. It's about Christ, you know, and if I go to church, it's not about, you know, my temple recommend was contingent upon me being active in church. Yeah. And that takes us back to the old law, just like, you know, we when... Yeah. We didn't understand that, did we? No. Those latter day scenes. No, we didn't. We yeah. thought it was the celestial kingdom. The other one thing you mentioned was the Holy Ghost. Oh, how, yeah. How fickle is he? Yeah, if you're unworthy, he'll walk away. No. No, that's not the good news. No, is it? that's not the good. He he is then, but they don't understand that. They, yeah. you know, they they don't. And I'm sorry for that. But if they read the Book of Romans, <laughs> they would more under, <laughs> they understand would that, understand that, wouldn't they? Understand it. Yeah. What would you? You've been through this process, w what would you have to give up? This is kind of a backwards question, but okay. what would you have to give up to go back to the church, the LDS church? What kind of thought process and things would you have to give up? Oh, I, it, it kind of a backwards question, I guess, but... My freedom. <laughs> your freedom? There, You'd have I, to give up I, my, the cross. The cross. Grace. Grace. I, I can't. Yeah, you'd, because oh, no, I be would impossible. be, I would be, I would be shackled. Yeah, you'd have to give up all you know about Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. Yeah, in reality, in reality, DNA I would, and archaeology. And it was interesting as we're sitting back there listening to praise to the man. Yeah, I'm like, oh, isn't that just? I'm, it's, golden calf. I'm sorry. Yeah, it really. Um, are we praising? Are we really worshiping God, or are we praising the man? Yeah. You know, and something to look at. You carried the Bible on your mission. Yeah, I did. What does the Bible mean to you now? Oh. Anything different? Oh, yeah. I think the biggest thing that um, I want to, you know, it's the article of faith. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it is translated correctly. We also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. Really? <laughs> yeah. The Bible is the Word of God. It is the testimony of Jesus of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It is all we need. And as a as a missionary, I mean, I look at it, I read the Bible now, and I'm like going, I never read that before. I was a Mormon for 43 years. Where were those scriptures? Where were those scriptures? I was in the Book of Mormon. No, oh, I don't, I, we just don't spend that much time. We carry it to church. We carry it, we cross-reference it. Yeah, we we use it to support the Book of Mormon. Yeah. But do we really, really get into the Bible? When you talk about grace now, um, and the cross and the sacrifice that Jesus did for us and paid for our sins, um, do you, <laughs> Don't you feel such a, a difference with what you were experiencing as a Latter-day Saint, obviously? Oh, yeah. yeah. Amazing Grace. Isn't it interesting that Amazing Grace isn't in their hymnal? Yeah, isn't that though? <laughs> and even some of the other things, they changed the words to it. Yeah. So it's, 
But yeah, yeah, no, uh, Grace, it's um, because I uh, I do not deserve it. I do not deserve it yet. I and he doesn't need me. God <laughs> is so huge and so big and so more than what the God that I believed in as a Mormon. Kind of a, you put it into a word, said small. He, oh, he's, he was in a box. Yeah. You know, um, there's, there's a Mormon scripture, and I can't remember what it is, but um, ye are bound when you, when I, I am bound when, I, when you do, do what I say, say but do, do not, not what, what I say, say have no promise. promise. Who are we to say that God is bound? Yeah, that, the, the phrase that struck me a lot is, we can't put God in our debt. How, how do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah, this and, is the God of the universe. <laughs> and that completely cross, cr you know, um, completely, um, what's the word, contradicts Bible scripture. Well, it really does. And, uh, and if Mormons or anyone would, would get, the, get into the Bible, Bible and put their trust in Christ, mm -hmm. Being born again of the Spirit, yeah, and it's an immediate thing. It is. You've only been out for a couple of years. A year. A year. Yeah. And yet, there's just no question. You you're a changed. New, you're a new creature. Oh, absolutely. You're born again. Absolutely. And so you've got just a couple of minutes or okay. a minute or so. What do you tell the LDS people? I just challenge them to read the Book of Romans. Um, it has yeah. changed my life. I have. Um, taken it on this this last year and really done it a study on it even just to read it sit down and listen to it on Bible and on the on your audio app in the on your phone and listen to Paul read it to you just listen to it and see that we are saved by grace that it is a gift and it is not by works and isn't it interesting what Jesus and Paul didn't say in the Bible have you noticed that I mean all the, the all the gospel, this other gospel that the, the Mormons believe yeah, in, yeah. they're not. It's not it's there. Not Jesus there. never mentioned Jesus it. Jesus never said it. Or Paul. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Angie, our time's up. Oh. You've wonderful story. Thank you're, you. You're so sweet, Thank and you. I know you've been a, a great influence to other people already, <laughs> in sharing and witnessing to people. They've Thank seen you. a change in your life, and I guess over those that have known you for years have probably seen a wonderful change yeah. in your life and the yeah. freedom that you have. Yeah. Well, thanks very much Thank for you. coming. And remember, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night. <laughs>